All right, darlings, this uh, whole grid is themed tidying up the um, popular show and organizing style of Marie Kondo. If you've seen it on Netflix at all, she talks about ways to organize your life. And we're going to use those same ideas, but in a math way. So instead of organizing actual things in our life, we're going to use some different strategies to organize expressions, whether it's combining them, rearranging them, um, using these different rules. And so to start off, we're going to talk about these properties of operations. So you kind of see that theme of tidying throughout um, as we go, but just in a math way instead of throughout your life life, um, but this follows a lot of the same strategies. So we're going to start with this first one, pack it ready, pencil out um, with the commutative property. So I know you want to say like commune, but it's really commutative property. And really you've been doing this, you maybe just didn't know. So I'm going to read through the definitions, but then when you see the examples, you'll realize, oh, I've already been doing that. So um, it can be used with addition, or multiplication. It cannot be used with subtraction or division. So here's why. It says when adding, changing the order of the numbers does not change the sum. So basically you can add numbers in whatever order you want and you will still get the same answer. However, if you do that with subtraction, that could change your answer. It could go from being a positive number to a negative number and get a completely different value. So this only works with addition and multiplication, so the same thing. When multiplying, you can um, change the order and the num of the numbers, and it does not change the product. So you can multiply in whatever order you want, and you'll still get the same answer. However, we have seen with division that does not happen. So you, uh, this only works with addition and multiplication. So let's look at our, some, our examples over here. Um, so you can see how one side we have one expression and so we're going to use the commutative property to write an equivalent expression so three plus four that would be the same as saying four plus three so go ahead and fill in your blank those are the same expression just using the commutative property you just flip the order okay that's the only thing that changed no matter what you would still get seven if you actually solved that but we're just looking at the expression same thing with multiplication here, 4 times 2 is the same thing as saying 2 times 4. And you can use the asterisk or the time sign or the dot, whatever you prefer. Okay. Here's another one um, just now with an algebraic expression. This is saying 5 times n, so we could also say n times 5. And if you want to use a multiplication symbol, that's fine. Try not to use x because then it gets confusing. And then down here we have y plus 3x. That's the same as if we just flipped it and said 3x plus y. So notice all we're doing is changing the order. We're just flipping it around and it means the exact same thing. That's called the commutative property. That's why I bolded order because that's the thing. The order does not matter. You'll still get the same answer. So let's go ahead on to the associative property. I know that's a little tricky to say but it's called associative property. And again, this is only used with addition or multiplication. You cannot do this with subtraction or multiplication, or I'm sorry, or division. Okay, it's kind of similar to the last one, but what's different here is it's saying when adding two or more numbers, the grouping of the numbers does not change the sum. And then same thing with multiplying. When multiplying two or more numbers, the grouping of the numbers does not change the product. So basically, if you group the first pair of numbers and then add in that third one, you'll get the same answers as if you group the other pair and added them in. We use this a lot when we do mental math. Okay, I'll kind of use this first example here. So let's say I was going to solve this one. Following order of operations, I would add the 4 plus 7 first to get 11, and then add in 3 to get 14. If I just regroup them, so notice I still have 4, 7, and 3 in the exact same order. All I did was now group them so that I'd be adding the 7 plus 3 first to get 10, and then add 4 to get 14. And in my opinion, that's the easier one to do in your head. Not that it matters, they're both the same, but that's where we sometimes use mental math to figure out the answer, is we group a certain pair of numbers together first. And with addition, you can do that. Same with multiplication. I'll use this example. This one would be grouping 4 times 12 first to get 48, and then times 10 to get 480. I could do the exact same thing, except grouping the 10 and 4 together first, and then the 12. Notice how the numbers are in the exact same order. I did not change the order. I just moved the parentheses, which changes the grouping. So in this one, I would do 4 times 10 to get 40, and then times 12 to get, again, 480. Now, personally, I think the one on the right is the easier one to do in your head, but it doesn't matter. Both expressions give you the same thing. All we did was change the grouping. So you just group two numbers together instead of um, the way they're grouped together with the other expression. 
But again, really, really important, the order stayed exactly the same. So let's try a couple more, but now with algebraic expressions. So instead of grouping the x and the y together, I can rewrite the numbers in the exact same order, but group the uh, 0 0.5 and x together first. Okay, again, this is my tip. When you're going to write yours, make sure you write the numbers exactly in the same order and then just change where the parentheses are. The reason for that is if you change the order of the numbers too, technically you're using commutative property as well. And it's not to say you can't do that, but when you only are being asked to use associative property, you only change the grouping. Do not change the order. You want to make sure you're being specific in how you are using the properties. If it tells you to use both, then great, go ahead and do that. But if it's just asking for one, you want to make sure you're only using that property being asked. Okay. Last one here, instead of grouping the 3 and the x, we could group the x and the y, and notice we got those plus signs in between. It's all addition or all multiplication, not mixing the two, okay? One more here, this is the easiest one, and you already knew how to do this, you just didn't know this was what it was called. So this one's called the identity property. So with addition, it's adding zero to a number does not change its value. So basically you add something by zero, and it stays exactly the same. Multiplication, same thing, except it's multiplying a number by 1 does not change the value. Multiplying by 0 does change it, right? It goes from like 5 times 0 is 0, but we want 5 times 1 gives us 5. Doesn't change. Starts as 5, ends as 5. So let's look at this one. 5 plus 0, an equivalent expression for that would just be 5, right? That's using that um, identity property for addition. Adding 0 to a number does not change it. Stays 5. Now they just gave us 8 here, so we could use either property. I'm going to choose to use the property identity property for multiplication, multiplying it by 1. But if you wanted to use the addition one, you could do that as well. And you can even flip the order. You could do 8 times 1 or 8 plus 0. As long as you don't get these flip-flop, right? I can't say 1 plus 8 equals 8. That's not true. And I can't say um, 0 times 8 gives me 8 because that's not true. So just make sure you're careful that you don't flip-flop them, okay? 1 times x just gives us x. Oh, there we go. Okay, and again, when it just has y there, we can use either one since it didn't specify. So we can either say 0 plus y, or y times 1, or you can even flip-flop those. Okay, so that's the identity property. You've known how to do that. So you have some practice here. This is just the top half of it, but I just want to give you a real quick preview of it. So you're going to use the properties of operations to create an equivalent expression. Tell what property you use to make an equivalent expression. So here's your expression. You need to write an equivalent expression to that and tell what property you use. Now, if you're going to use the identity property, you really want to be mindful, like this one, for example, n plus 0. Well, obviously, that's using 0, so it's going to be using the identity property. So unless you see a 0 or 1, you really shouldn't be using the identity property. You should only use those if you see 0 and 1 or if you see something totally by itself. Um, you really want to try and be mindful of how were you using these in your examples so that you're using them similarly here. Okay, and then don't forget there's also a couple questions at the bottom and you need to teach your signature before moving on. Alright, good luck tidying up or reorganizing those um, expressions. Good luck.